listening to the Marketing Happy Hour podcast, where we discuss career and industry insights with our peers in marketing. We're here to talk about it all, like the ups and downs of working in social media, how to build authentic relationships in the influencer and PR space, managing a nine to five and a side hustle at the same time, how to be productive in your life and career without losing your sanity, and more. Ultimately, we're here to build a community with you because we're all trying to navigate the world of marketing together. Are you ready? Grab your favorite drink and join your hosts, Cassie and Erica, for this week's episode. Hey, Marketing Happy Hour listeners, welcome back. Today, we're catching up with Kelly McGlone, growth marketing associate at one of my favorite wine brands, Aveline. In this episode, Kelly chats through their customer acquisition and retention strategies in email and paid media and shares her experience as a newer young professional, offering some great advice for those entering the job market today. Grab your favorite drink and let's listen in together. Hey, Kelly, how are you? I am doing very good. I'm, I'm so excited to be here and finally chatting with you guys. Yes, okay. so, so excited to have you here. We are huge fans of the brand that you work for, so just really excited to dive in today. But before we get started, I do have an important question for you that we ask all of our guests, and that is, what is in your glass tonight? It is marketing happy hour after all. Yes, I have to say, my I'll give my favorite Aveline Rex, my, yes. <laughs> it differs every day, you know, <laughs> of right. Course. I've been enjoying our rosé recently as we're like getting into the warmer months. So good. Which I feel like I wasn't a big rosé drinker before I've like become a new wine drinker since working for Aveline. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like red now, which was like, not oh my, my goodness. Before. Um, so I would say red. That's like my favorite happy hour drink. That's the perfect, like you're done work, like yeah. lying down. Um, go. <laughs> and then my other favorite happy hour drink is we have rosé cans, which like, I feel like our most unique offering right now. They're limited edition. Um, and they're like, they're just so cute, cute pink oh little rosé cans, like perfect portion. So I have, um, I have a little beach bonfire tonight with some friends. So oh, can't so have to make cute. Oh my, <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so fun. Jealous. I'll have to pick some of those rosé cans up. That is right up my alley. <laughs> They're so fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have just water right now, keeping it very simple. Um, it is gosh, early ish right now when we're recording. So yeah. no alcohol quite yet, but you know, sometimes happy hour <laughs> starts a little early on Fridays <laughs> when we're recording this. So we'll see. What about you, Erica? I just have my regular old coffee. Um, I made my own uh, coffee syrup from just sugar and like, I don't know, it was like pumpkin pie spice that I had left over oh. and it's really good. So highly recommend making yeah. your own yeah. syrup. Super easy. I'm actually a big... I'll give my coffee a plug too. I have some yeah. iced coffee here <laughs> and I always buy syrups. I have like vanilla chai in there right oh. now. Mm, delicious. But you make your own, like you're on it's another so level. Easy. <laughs> it's so easy. It's, Fancy. Literally, it's literally one part sugar, one part water, like a cup of sugar, a cup of water. You reduce it down. Easy, easy. That's simple syrup, but you can like add whatever you want to it. It's really Maybe easy. I'll try. Yeah, yeah, you should. <laughs> same, anyway. same. Kelly and I will give that a go. Yeah. Um, but Kelly, yeah, super excited to dive into the meat of this conversation. So first, before we get into it, can you just tell us about your background and how you landed at Aveline? Yeah, definitely. So I graduated from the University of Delaware in 2021, so a little under two years ago. So I'm still, you know, new to the workforce. I like had a full-time job for under two years, but I definitely throughout college, like I knew that I was interested in marketing and just tried to get any and all experience that I could. So yeah. I worked in, you know, different industries, many different roles. My first internship was at like a wedding and events venue. I actually, I had a minor in event management, so I'm definitely interested in like event marketing and that side of things as well. Um, and then my next one was at QVC. I don't know if you guys are yeah. familiar with the home yeah. shopping work, which seems kind of random, um, but their headquarters, I'm from Pennsylvania and it was like five minutes down the street. So yeah. it was a cool experience because it's like a big company, you know? Um, and then 
my like junior year internship, which I feel like that's like the big internship year. There's so much pressure on everyone. So I worked very hard and got my dream internship at anthropology. Wow. And that was when COVID hit, of course. So I know like everyone, of course, was impacted by that. I was still in college at the time. So of course, you know, like we were at school from home, it shifted everything. Um, But that internship was canceled at the time. And I ended up having like a still a two week marketing program with a free people company, actually, which was good, but um, definitely wasn't what I was expecting for that summer. So things shifted. I knew I still wanted to do something. So I ended up having few different like part-time internships um the, my, the favorite thing I like to talk about though is I started a small business with one of my best friends called awesome. we made we like handmade our own earrings and sold it like we kind of thought it would be just a fun something to do that summer yeah. but we ended up doing it for a whole year up until we started our full-time jobs it was like super successful got bigger than we thought but it was such a good experience because it was just us two doing it I mean you guys know like what it's like to work with one of your best friends it's it's awesome it's like just you doing everything you know so we were making the actual product which is time consuming and then running our social media we built and ran our own Shopify website which I now use those skills at Aveline yeah customer service like just had to figure everything out on our own which helps me a lot in my job now and you know, I, I feel like I was constantly just doing other things. That's the cool thing about marketing is like everyone needs it. So, you know, I would just reach out like my high school job at an ice cream parlor. I ran their social media like all throughout college and ended up <laughs> running events for them and stuff, you know, so a little bit of everything. And then when graduate graduation rolled around, um, I knew I was interested in like maybe moving somewhere, anywhere really. So I yeah. applied for jobs all over the place definitely was focusing um on like Southern California because I feel like there's just a lot of brands I'm interested in out here um I actually applied for a job at Aveline back then and was just not qualified (laughs) like it was a reach um but I loved the brand um which is funny and then I ended up getting a role at an agency and started as a paid social associate who's based in San Diego um And that was a really good experience. Like, I feel like I just learned a lot about paid social marketing very fast. It's interesting to have, you know, clients in totally different spaces where their needs are very different and you have to create different strategies for different clients. Um, Yeah, so that was great. But I knew I wanted to work for a brand eventually. So I started looking for different things. A job at Aveline came up again. So I applied again and it was actually funny. This is like a crazy full circle networking story. But back when I had graduated and was applying for jobs, I applied for one um, at like a sustainable clothing company called Outer Known. And I always look at who my manager would be in the role, like reach out to them, see if I can chat with them. Do we have anything in common, whatever. And the manager at that role, like, was from my same hometown in Pennsylvania. Oh you know, the jobs wow. in LA, like, we had all these crazy similarities. So we chatted. That role didn't work out either. But then when I applied for this new role at Aveline, again, I'm like, let's see who the manager is. And it was the same person, Zach. He had moved no from over to Aveline. I was like, oh my gosh, like, no this way. is <laughs> so so cool. Um, yeah, we had had like one phone conversation. I was like, is he even going to remember me? I don't know. So I think that he probably recognized my name and like that helped to get a first conversation started. Of course, you still need to, you know, have the actual skills for the role, but power of networking, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I've been at Aveline since August and that was very long winded, but <laughs> no, <it's> great. <laughs> that <was> great. <laughs> I love hearing the behind the scenes of that, especially like as a new grad kind of navigating where to go. I, I noticed that you went the agency route first. And that's what a lot of people do. That's what we've heard a lot of like the agency route. You kind of just get your hands on experience in everything Mm -hmm. right away. It might not be your forever job, but it's always a great place to start. Um, And I know Cassie and I both wanted to do the same thing. When we graduated, we both went our two like 
totally separate places. She went to New York and I went to Nashville and we just like did our marketing thing. And then we both ended up back in Florida, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so cool to hear that. Like you kind of took that similar path too. How do you recommend, I'm curious, like reaching out to those hiring managers or people that would be the position that you're applying for as manager? Yeah. Good question. I, I definitely am big on doing that. Um, and just, I literally will like stalk their LinkedIn and I'm just like, there has to be something we have in common. Like, yeah, you know, definitely message them if you can find their email and send them an email. That's great too. But I feel like I try to not just do like a totally cold, like, hi, this is my name. I'm interested in this, which is fine, but try to bring some sort of like personality into it. Like, oh, I noticed this, like, I'm also interested in that. Or I also have experience in that. Um, Cause I feel like someone's just more likely to respond if there's like a personal connection there, you know, like totally. we all get so many messages in our inbox and people are yeah. busy. So you got to tug on the heartstrings a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's great advice. Yeah. Our inboxes are definitely always full of like sales people on LinkedIn. I can't get away from it. It's so funny. But yeah, that's great advice. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, I'm curious what your day-to-day -day role looks like as growth marketing associate and in your current role. It's definitely changed a lot since I started just because I feel like Aveline, like we're so new and growing quickly. So things are just changing all the time, which I personally like. And yeah. I like how my role has shifted. Um, So my main task, you know, as in growth marketing is like acquisition, bringing new customers into our company. Like that is the main focus. Um, and we mostly do that through paid social and search. So like those two channels were my main focus, which I was a paid social associate previously. So it was fun for me to learn more about the search side as well and um, how those work together and everything. Um, and then overall, like we have a small D to C team of just four people. So even though that's kind of my role, I feel like I'm, I was always dipping into the retention side of things, really anything happening on our website, our subscription program, any new tools we're testing. Our team of four is just constantly having conversations about that and helping each other out. So I feel like that's part of my daily routine, depending on what we're testing at that time. Um, and then we actually started working with a growth marketing agency. Uh, mostly because on meta it's like you just need to constantly have new creative oh, yeah. and I think everyone can relate to the struggle of like an internal creative team simply can't do that <laughs> everybody wants creative hours you know so we started partnering with an agency which has been really awesome for us and we've seen crazy growth growth on meta but that freed up some time for me too so I started helping out more on the retention side with our email marketing as well, which has been really interesting to me. And I feel like it's helped me on the acquisition side too, like having hands on both channels and making sure that across the board, there's consistency, like what we're messaging to people on both sides of things. It's not two like separate people, separate teams, you know, it's all one flow. Um, so I've really enjoyed that. And yeah, I guess those are like my two main tasks. I also help a bit with events because I mentioned I'm interested in that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I love that. I love how roles always like evolve yeah. and grow into, <laughs> you know, specialized things that like you may personally be good at, like the event stuff. I, I love that. Um, curious just to hear your favorite part of working in growth marketing. We haven't had that many growth marketers on here. So just want to hear. Yeah, it's a fun question. I think at Avalon specifically, because the company itself is like organically growing so much, like it's really fun. Just like, you know, every month is better than the last. We're hitting our goals. It's exciting as a company to do that, as a team to do that. And I think for me, what I like about growth marketing too is like, it's such a, there's like tangible results, you know, like you, I can see what, I'm providing to the company as a whole and every single, you know, role at Aveline contributes, but I think I like seeing the numbers, you know, it's satisfying to me personally. Um, 
And then I think another interesting thing is that, well, a few things. So I feel like there's still so many people who haven't discovered Aveline that are going to love it. And I love seeing people discover it for the first time. And they're like, I like stopped drinking wine and I discovered Aveline. And now it's like the only thing I drink because yeah, we ha- it's all like organic. All of our wine has no sugar aside from our sparkling, which has like 0.5 grams to make the bubbles. Um, it's all low sulfite. It has a lot of qualities that people like look for in wine or didn't know was available. So it makes me happy when people are like, I can finally, you know, drink yeah. my wine again. Um, and just learning like what our customers are interested in with like now that we work um, with our agency growth partner, we do we have the capacity for so much more testing and it's always unexpected like what people are interested in you're like really yeah. like what's the ad that you clicked on you know <laughs> um, so for example like the low sulfite messaging has been so popular like people are really interested in that yeah um compared to even like low sugar and things so it's just more to learn about our customer which is fun Yeah, that is really cool. And you guys are doing a great job. I have been a follower and a fan of the brand for a long time. But as I was researching to do these questions for you, I got hit like after I looked up a lot of things, I kept getting hit with ads. I was like, they know. They're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. Um, What current strategies is your team utilizing to kind of grow the brand? um, And which strategy has been the most successful, would you say? Yeah, definitely. In terms of channel, like Meta is where we see the most, which I think is like pretty consistent for most brands. But in terms of just like strategy, we've been leaning into bundles a lot more, which has been really helpful for acquisitions. Specifically, we have an intro set, which is like, you know, the best deal you can get on a set. It has a bit of an extra discount and it's just a good way to try all of our wines that we offer pretty much. Um, So that's been really good. That's what most of our ads focus on is like that intro set right now, at least. Um, And then we also just have like other bundle options as well. I feel like just leaning into that, like people just like one click purchase, make it easy for people, curate things for them. You know, if people like red wine, we have a set of all of our red wines, white wines, you know, whatever it may be that has helped a lot and like promoting that in ads. Um, We also have a unique issue because we have a six bottle minimum on our website. Yeah. Uh, Just because like the shipping cost of wine is crazy. It's like so heavy, breakable, all this fun stuff. Um, (laughs) So the bundles help to surpass that six bottle minimum without the customer even realizing because that's, A complaint we hear which you know is fair like if you just want to try one bottle I understand why you're like why six you know so I think the bundle kind of tricks them into like oh perfect an intro set and then they never even know about the minimum (laughs) so it's been a good strategy for us that's awesome do you guys have a subscription model too Mm -hmm. okay yeah we do and we've been leaning into that a lot more we actually just launched ads for subscription specifically and We definitely try to like upsell that to customers who have purchased once or twice, but we do see people subscribe as their first purchase as well. Um, That's like, you know, our biggest discount that you can get. Like we definitely try to elevate that. There's lots of perks that come with it. So that's like a big growth focus um, for us this year, our team. Yeah, that's awesome. I want to talk about email as well. Email is one of my favorite topics, and I'm excited to hear about how you guys have leveraged that platform. But I want to talk about retention for email, but first, quickly, just some acquisition tips. How are you guys building your list, bringing in new email subscribers? What are some of the strategies you've implemented there? Yeah, I think we definitely still have a lot to learn with retention we actually just hired an awesome new retention manager so she's bringing great new insights to the team I've been learning a lot from her and I'm still learning a lot um, when it comes to email since I am kind of new to the platform but um it's interesting like I mean when we started ramping up our meta ads we just started getting way more traffic to the site so I think naturally like our email list started growing so 
again, like that acquisition helped our retention side too. Um, so I think that's one side of it. It's like, you just need to get as much traffic as you can to the website. And then the other side is make, once you're on the website, make it enticing to join the email list. So um, we're leaning into some different pop-up testing, you know, like depending on what UTM, like, are you coming from an ad? Then you see this pop-up. Are you coming organically? You see this pop-up. We also have like some you a unique perk, I guess, of random days of like crazy traffic. If Cameron, one of our founders is Cameron Diaz. So if she is on Jimmy Fallon or Rachel Ray talking about the wine, we see like way more traffic yeah. than usual, which makes sense. So kind of optimizing on those big traffic days, you know, if we know they're coming, like, and we have a pop-up specific to that audience or a landing page that relates to it, leaning into those big traffic moments, I think is important. That's awesome. Do you guys too, like, how are you setting up your internal emails? Do you guys have like a welcome sequence that you've set up to kind of automate some of that process when you do acquire new uh, email list subscribers? Like, what does that look like for you guys? Yeah, we have a welcome flow. We have lots of different flows depending on where you are um, in the process as a customer, if you've made a purchase or not. Uh, but our welcome flow is always like the biggest revenue driving flow. We do offer like a small uh, discount if you sign up for the email list, which many brands do. So that flow includes the discount code as well. So I'm sure it's a bit inflated because, you know, people get a discount in that flow. But um, yeah, we kind of introduce them to the brand, give them that discount code. I feel like we have a strong like brand story and you know, our founders, similar to you guys, like their two best friends who started, they were sitting around one day, like drinking wine. And they were like, we don't actually know what's in this, but we know what's yeah. in every food we eat, all of our skincare. Um, so they like created their own wine brand where everything is transparent on the label and everything. So we definitely try to highlight the story in our emails. Cause I feel like a lot of people might just land on the site, sign up. And again, like we want to get that emotional attachment to the brand through the welcome series a bit. Um, yeah. And then we have other flows as well. If you want to, I should get into that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, tell us like, what is the most successful flow that you have that, you know, gets the most amount of customers to come back to the website, let's say aside from that, like initial welcome mm -hmm. flow. Yeah. I would say, one thing we started recently, this is like a, a partner that we started working with. I think there's some different partners that offer this, but we wanted to focus, yeah, on like getting people back to make their second purchase, third purchase, mm -hmm. like how can we make that as easy as possible? Um, so we started doing like replenishment flows, we call it. So um, basically the company that we work with like uses our back end like Shopify data their own data to figure out when someone is like due to repurchase, you know, yeah. like wine, similar to skincare or something. It's something that you finish and then you reorder it. So we kind of have to figure out the perfect time to hit the person. Like, okay, they're on their last bottle of wine. Let's hit them and be like, Oh, like don't let your wine shelf like yeah. be empty, you know, <laughs> like order more, like have it right at your door by the time you finish your last bottle, that kind of thing. Um, and it leads to like a cart that shows them all of their previous purchases. So they can just be like, oh, I want to repurchase the rosé. Awesome. Done. So the conversion rate on like that specific page is so easy because it's just people who have already purchased and are like re-adding things to their cart. So I think that's been a big one for us. Again, just like simplifying the purchase process as much as possible. Yeah. As always <laughs> yeah. 100%. That's awesome. And you already mentioned some of the kind of content that you guys create for email. You discussed brand story, uh, a little bit of product edu um, education, and uh, some of those promotional aspects. But any other content categories per se that you guys include in your email strategy? Um, I think a lot of times it's really easy to think about this for me being in more of the service side of clients. Um, 
sometimes that seems a little bit easier than product product can get really creative. It can be hard to like switch it up and things like that. So what are some ways that you guys kind of introduce a nice variety to serve your email list with? That's such a good question. Um, we send like a good amount of emails every month. And I think our team works together really well to make it seem like it's always fresh. Like we have a pretty small product assortment. It's usually like 10 wines, even less, maybe more, depending on if we have like limited time available. So we have to get creative in how we speak to them and make it feel like new and fresh. Um, so we definitely have like across all of our marketing channels, social and everything, every month there's like some stories we want to tell. Um, so for example, if it's like leading into spring, we're like, okay, it's rosé season now. Like let's spend time highlighting that. What different things can we highlight about that? Um, it's made in France. Let's do a wine all about like the creation of the wine, like the vineyard that it's from, that side of things. And then maybe we'll highlight tans and like, you can bring it to the beach. You can bring it to picnic, that different thing. And then we'll do, why do our founders love the rosé? How do they use it in their day to day? Like, yeah. So just trying to think of different perspectives of how to talk about each of our varietals. Um, we definitely lean into any like big gifting moments for sure. Um, Easter was like a big one for us. Surprisingly, that was like, wow holiday on email <laughs> um awesome it's funny um our last call emails like always do super well like if you want to make sure to have your wine in time for easter do that yeah. um so there's a lot of things that it's like okay we want to make sure we get these important dates in and then it's kind of just getting creative with like storytelling and we'll do fun like movie pairings drink red and watch this Cameron movie, you know, love it. Um, awesome. Yeah. Like I think our, on our side, the email, we're like, okay, these are the ideas we have. And then our creative team is just so good at bringing them to life in a way that yeah. feels unique. So it's a team effort. That's so cool. As I'm sitting here, I literally got an email from Avalene. <laughs> literally as we were speaking and it's all about the Spanish reds and yeah. it's giving me all of this information about the <laughs> set that you have available, the varietals that you have available. And it also includes a little section of what our founders love about these. Yeah, that's so, so I love that so much. <laughs> Super cool <laughs> that it just came in. Maybe I was subconsciously just thinking of that email because I definitely like scheduled that last yeah. night. Yeah. So. That's <laughs> awesome. So good. That's <laughs> so fun. Okay. Let's switch gears just a little bit and talk more about paid media. Um, what are you guys doing in the way of paid media at this time? We, we know that like alcohol paid media, yeah. like laws and, and rules and things can be pretty, pretty, pretty complicated. Um, what are you guys doing in the way of that right now? Yeah. Um, it is complicated. I feel like I first started and I was like, Oh, we can't, say that we can't like we can't say anything mm -hmm. we can't advertise on some platforms like yeah just any limitations which makes sense but if you haven't worked in this space before you wouldn't think about it um yeah so we can't advertise on tiktok at all which like yeah pains me. yeah it pains me as a gen z yeah. you know i'm like oh my gosh like even yeah. <laughs> even through like anything like an influencer or anything it's still like you can't really I, we, we have, we do like organic on social and we have sure. like make content for our page, but can't like whitelist that probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, and we definitely err on the more like cautious side. Mm -hmm. um, As you should. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like I think, anything. <laughs> I, know, I feel like sometimes brands though, they're like, well, you know, we'll just like try it. See if we get caught. Maybe we'll just get a warning the first time. <laughs> but yeah. um sometimes I see ads I'm like how are they saying that oh like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so we really focus on paid social like it's really just meta so like Facebook and Instagram right now and Google so we don't have like a large like folder of different platforms that we're on which was an intentional choice like last year we were thinking about testing like Reddit Pinterest um other channels but we kind of 
decided like our goal this year we just want to get our CPA like as low as we can like let's see how much we can get out of the channels that we're already successful on like we felt like there was more audience more we can squeeze out of it before we like spread our budget too thin across channels that would potentially drive like very high CPAs so that's kind of why once we made that decision we're like okay let's work with an agency to like really focus on testing creative yeah Um, so we put a lot of time into those two channels and we haven't like hit any walls like it seems like it's good. I mean, you know, a lot of people drink wine. So I think there's like a big audience out there for us, which is good. Um, but yeah, even on there, like there's a lot of things we can't say or do. We, of course, have to only target people over the age of 21. So we haven't been able to test. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like the Advantage Plus shopping campaigns on Meta. It's a somewhat new type of campaign that they rolled out that they're really pushing. It's been successful for a lot of brands. We haven't even been able to test it yet because the whole thing is like, let Meta do all the targeting. Like you yeah. can't do anything, but we're like, we have to. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Can't yeah. The 18 year old, 18 year old. So yeah. um, I think that's coming soon, but um, yeah, lots of limitations. And in terms of things that we can say to like, we get comments all the time. It's like, this is the only wine where I don't get a hangover. And we cannot like say that in ads or claim that like no health claims or anything about making you feel good, you know, because it's still alcohol. Yeah. Um, So it's tough because that's like some, a convincing point. That's what a lot of people are looking for and we'll probably sell them on it. So we just have to get creative in how we can like say things in a way that doesn't claim anything we we can't claim legally yeah um but it's a good creative exercise (laughs) yeah I I I think creating that brand awareness too and then they're going to your page from the paid ad and seeing all of these reviews or comments or whatever saying all of these awesome things about the wine I think that that still works and I like what you said too about how you kind of like niche down and did a couple platforms really, really excellently before you move into all the platforms and maybe spread yourselves too thin as a team. Like, I think that's really important um, to do in marketing, especially if you have like a smaller team or a smaller budget or are just newer to a space, um, especially in advertising, which kind of leads me into my next question, which is just what are your top tips for a brand that is new to paid media? Where would you kind of suggest to start? Is it Google? Is it Meta? What do you think? Yeah, it's a good question. And it's interesting because there's two sides. It's like, it might be worth testing these different platforms because maybe your brand kills it on Pinterest or something, you know? Um, But I do think like the safest place to start and put your budget is Meta. I I think you want to have like your ads on Meta and Google at the very least Mm because that's just where most people are and you want to be somewhere in the social space and somewhere in the search space. Um, And I think your strategy there, you know, you can start simple and just grow as you get more learnings. Um, with how Meta has been progressing, I feel like that it actually has kind of become like easier for us. Like you're encouraged to let their algorithm take over targeting, especially with mm-hmm. this new type of ASC campaign that I mentioned. Um, you know, I feel like I used to be like inputting specific like interests yeah. that people have related to my brand. And now it's like, we really just say 21 plus exclude the states we can't ship to and then like let yeah. it mm-hmm. in there so that's kind of nice if you're new from a strategy side to just set up a campaign that way um and then I would say your other main focus should just be creative I know everyone always says that and it's like so much easier said than done <laughs> um because you don't always have a ton of creative just lying around for your brand but I would say really just like test any images videos you have like I've seen static images do well for us randomly which I feel like everyone says that's not a thing anymore like just test every creative you have and then see what works you know keep the top performers running and keep making like iterations on those as often as you can with the bandwidth and team that you have and I think that's a good place to start 
Yeah, those are great tips. And I, I'm thinking here as you're as you're talking, I'm like, Aveline would kill it on Pinterest. Like hopefully you guys <laughs> go there soon because you would literally kill it. So excited to see where your team um, expands yeah. into as well. Yeah, that's funny. I think we did before I was here. I think we tested ads on Pinterest, but it wasn't like a full fledged strategy. Yeah. I've definitely always like kind of pushed for that and been interested. So I'm sure we will. And I know organically we're starting to post there a lot more because we do so many recipes. We work with like really yeah. good. Like, creators that will create a recipe around like one of our wines so and we have so many like fun drink spritz recipes yeah. that are on Pinterest, so yeah awesome yeah. that's awesome you'll have I'll, to keep us posted because we uh, want to talk more about Pinterest so if you guys do dive uh, in let us know <laughs> okay I will. Yes. yes, please do. Well, Kelly, this has been really great. And I already have so many great ideas and just tidbits to take into my strategies that I'll be building for clients and for myself. But um, as we wrap up today's conversation, we want to ask one of our favorite questions ever. And that is, what do you know now that you wish you knew early on in your career? Yeah, such a good question. And I feel like I'm still, every time I like listen to your guys's podcast and you know, you have so many people who have been working in their industries for years I'm like oh that's good like write that down because I feel like you know (laughs) I'm pretty early on in my career so I'm like taking in the advice (laughs) um but I feel like one thing that I've kind of been learning now and I feel like would have been useful earlier is like I feel like it's easily easy especially as women if you're like the youngest person on the team the newest person on the team to just like not speak up or feel like oh, I do have a thought about this, but like, I'm sure this person who's been here for five years, like has a better idea or like, I haven't really earned my place to speak yet, you know? And I just like, as soon as I started at Aveline, I mentioned that we have a small D to C team and like, it immediately was just like, here's an idea. Like, what does everyone think? Like, what is your opinion on this? And I was like, oh, (laughs) like, like, I can talk. What? Um, (laughs) And I, I just never feel like on my team, I'm the person with least experience, you know, even though technically in terms of like years I am, but my opinions are heard just as much as everyone else's and appreciated, um, which I'm very thankful for. And I feel like it's helped me to realize that like, just because you might be newer to your industry or to like full-time work in general, doesn't mean that your thoughts are less valuable. In a lot of cases, they may be more valuable, you know, if you're bringing new eyes to something like these people have been working on this for years straight like you have a new interesting perspective so realize that and realize that what you have to say is interesting and valuable yeah I love that I know imagine how many successful campaigns products whatever could have been developed if someone would have just spoken up and shared their idea I think there's so many missed opportunities out there because of that. But I think it does also go back to the leader, like you said, empowering that and uh, encouraging people to speak up. Cause unfortunately a lot of people don't, they're not in a setting where the culture encourages that. And that's really sad. And I think that also impacts you in future positions. You don't feel like you can speak up, even if the leader is encouraging you because in past positions that wasn't welcome. So if you're a leader listening, definitely take that to note, but thank you for sharing that Kelly. And thank you for just empowering everyone to, to share and the least they could say, or the worst case scenario is, you know, not right now or no, or whatever, but at least you tried and you, you know, stood up for the ideas that you have. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. It definitely, I feel like I only even like realized this because of my team at Aveline, you know, so again, much easier said than done. It's, it's not easy to always speak up, but totally. gotta try to believe in yourself. Yeah, totally. That's such good advice. Thanks for sharing that. Um, well, we are at the end here. Where can everyone find you follow along with what you're up to and what Aveline is up to all the good stuff. Yeah. Um, for Aveline, you can check out our website, drinkaveline.com. You want some email inspo you can sign up for that <laughs> i'm signed up to like a million different brands <laughs> um our instagram is at aveline tiktok pinterest if you know we'll start posting recipes so yes. <laughs> you can follow that um also kind of random but our spotify we always like 
a few times we've partnered with creative or creators for we have like a dinner party playlist oh, that's so cool shopping and they're really good um I'm like so bad at curating playlists so <laughs> I always love when we come out with a new one that um, is so awesome. if you're, yeah if you're a music person you can check that out for some inspo um yeah and then you can check me out on my LinkedIn most of my other socials are just private so it's not very exciting but definitely <laughs> on okay. LinkedIn. happy to chat awesome. awesome thanks so much for joining us today this has been incredible Cassie's looking up that Spotify yep. stuff right <laughs> now we <Literally> got it <laughs> Good. I always need new music <laughs> perfect Friday playlist for today yes. <laughs> yes. awesome Kelly thank you so much for joining us really was a treat having you on marketing happy hour thank you guys so much That's it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. And in some exciting news, Kelly actually wrote to us after this recording and let us know that Aveline's newest varietal has finally launched. So definitely head to their website to check it out. And if you enjoyed this episode or learned something new, share with us by subscribing, rating, and leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform. For more from Marketing Happy Hour, head over to our website, marketinghappyhr.com, or follow us on Instagram at marketinghappyhr. We'll see you next week. We are so excited to share that our first ever free Marketing Happy Hour digital resource is now available. Download the Dream Career Game Plan today at marketinghappyhr.com forward slash freebie. That's marketinghappyhr.com forward slash freebie. This five-step workbook will guide you through defining your goals, building your network, diversifying your skills, influencing where you're at, and investing in your growth. Cassie and I created this resource with marketing careers in mind, but the framework can be applied to any industry. Our hope is that this workbook will help you truly elevate your career, whether you're in the market for a new position or just looking to make your mark in your current organization. No matter where this resource finds you, we are cheering you on every step of the way. So go check it out at marketinghappyhr.com forward slash freebie to download and make your career dreams come true.